The Russia-Ukrainian war is an ongoing armed conflict that started in February 2014, primarily involving Russia and pro-Russian forces on one hand, and Ukraine on the other. The war initially centered on the status of Crimea and parts of the Donbas, which are internationally recognized as part of Ukraine. Tensions between Russia and Ukraine erupted especially from 2021 to 2022, when it became apparent that Russia was considering launching a military invasion of Ukraine. In February 2022, the crisis deepened with diplomatic talks with Russia failing and escalated as Russia moved forces into the separatist-controlled regions on 22 February 2022. On 24 February Russia began a full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Following the Euromaidan protest and the subsequent removal of Ukrainian President Viktor Yanukovych on 22 February 2014, and amidst pro-Russian unrest in Ukraine, Russian soldiers without insignias took control of strategic positions and infrastructure within the Ukrainian territory of Crimea. On 1 March 2014, the Federation Council of the Russian Federation unanimously adopted a resolution to petition Russian President Vladimir Putin to use military force in Ukraine. The resolution was adopted several days later, after the start of the Russian military operation on the returning of Crimea. Russia then annexed Crimea after a widely criticized local referendum which was organized by Russia after the capturing of the Crimean parliament. His outcome was for the Autonomous Republic of Crimea to join the Russian Federation. In April, demonstrations by pro-Russian groups in the Donbas area of Ukraine escalated into a war between the Ukrainian government and the Russian-backed separatist forces of the self-declared Donetsk and Luhansk People's Republics. In August, Russian military vehicles crossed the border in several locations of Donetsk Oblast. The incursion by the Russian military was seen as responsible for the defeat of Ukrainian forces in early September. From approximately 3 o'clock GMT, explosions were heard in many cities across the country, as Ukraine's air defenses and other military infrastructure came under attack. Reports say troops are advancing from the north in the direction of Kyiv, from the east through Donetsk, Luhansk and Kharkov, and from Crimea in the south. In less than 24 hours, dozens of targets have been struck as Russian troops have poured into Ukraine. In recent days, Russia had positioned landing ships capable of deploying main battle tanks, armored vehicles and personnel off the Ukrainian coast in a major buildup in the Black Sea and the Sea of Azov. Ukrainian forces are concentrated in the east of Ukraine, towards Donetsk and Luhansk. The International Institute for Strategic Studies says that a Russian advance north from Crimea may succeed in cutting them off from Kyiv, stranding them on the east side of the Dnieper River. With Russian troops to their east, in Donetsk and Luhansk, north in Russia, and on the west bank of the Dnieper, they would be encircled. The deliveries of the US lethal aid to Ukraine included 0.5 BMG caliber ammunition, M141 bunker defeat munition and FGM-148 Javelin anti-tank missiles. US also intends to transfer Mi-17 helicopters to Ukraine, previously used by Afghanistan's Western Military District. The following day, Russian state news agency TASS reported that 50 of its BTGs consisting of 15,000 soldiers were massed for drills in the southern military district, which includes occupied Crimea, and also borders the Donbas conflict zone. By 9 April 2021, the head of the Ukrainian border guard estimated that 85,000 Russian soldiers were already in Crimea, or within 40 kilometers of the Ukrainian border. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky spoke to American President Joe Biden and urged NATO members to speed up Ukraine's request for membership. The Kremlin spokesman said that Russian military movements pose no threat, but Russian official Dmitry Kozak warned that Russian forces could act to defend Russian citizens in Ukraine, and any escalation of the conflict would mean the beginning of the end of Ukraine, not a shot in the leg, but in the face. At the time some half a million people in the self-proclaimed Donetsk People's Republic and Luhansk People's Republic had been issued with Russian passports since fighting broke out in 2014. Russia refused to participate when Ukraine requested a Vienna document meeting with France, Germany, and the OSC. German Chancellor Angela Merkel telephoned Russian President Vladimir Putin to demand a reversal of the buildup. United States White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki announced in early April 2021 that a buildup of Russian troops on Ukrainian border was the largest since 2014. On 24 March 2021, Ukrainian President Zelensky signed the decree approving the strategy of disoccupation and reintegration of the temporarily occupied territory of the Autonomous Republic of Crimea and the city of Sevastopol. On 17 April 2021, Russian Federal Security Service FSB, detained the Ukrainian Consul General in St. Petersburg, Alexander Sezoniuk, over spying allegations, accusing Sezoniuk of trying to get classified information from FSB database. The Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs stated that it had summoned Ukraine's charged affairs, Vassil Pokatulo, and told him that Sezoniuk had to leave the country by 22 April. Ukrainian Ministry of Foreign Affairs then stated that Sezoniuk was held for several hours before being released. 
It also protested Sezonyuk's detention and rejected Russia's accusations, adding that it will expel a senior diplomat of the Russian embassy in Kyiv in response to the provocation within 72 hours beginning 19 April. On 22 April 2021, Russian Minister of Defense Sergei Shoigu announcing an exercise drawdown with troops returning to base by 1 May, but leaving equipment at the Poganovo training facility for the annual exercise with Belarus in September 2021. The conflict began with a major military buildup, initially from March to April 2021, and then from October 2021 to February 2022. During the second military buildup, Russia issued demands to the United States and NATO, advancing two draft treaties that contained requests for what it referred to as security guarantees, including a legally binding promise that Ukraine would not join NATO, as well as a reduction in NATO troops and military hardware stationed in Eastern Europe, and threatened an unspecified military response if NATO continued to toe an aggressive line. On 9 December 2021, Russian President Vladimir Putin spoke of discrimination against Russian speakers outside Russia, saying, I have to say that Russophobia is a first step towards genocide. You and I know what is happening in Donbas. It certainly looks very much like genocide. Russia also condemned the Ukrainian language law. On 15 February 2022, Putin told the press. What is going on in Donbas is exactly genocide. News outlets noted that, despite Putin's accusation of genocide against native Russian speakers, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is himself a native Russian speaker. Russian claims of genocide have been widely rejected as false. Several international organizations, including the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, OSCE Special Monitoring Mission to Ukraine, and Council of Europe, found no evidence supporting the Russian claims. The genocide allegations have been rejected by the European Commission as Russian disinformation. The U.S. Embassy in Ukraine described the Russian genocide claim as reprehensible falsehood, while the U.S. State Department spokesman Ned Price said that Moscow was making such claims as an excuse for invading Ukraine. On 18 February, Russian ambassador to the U.S. Anatoly Antonov accused the U.S. of condoning the forced assimilation of Russians in Ukraine. In a nationalistic speech on 21 February, Putin also alleged that Ukrainian society had become neo-Nazi without providing evidence and said that Russia's aim was to demilitarize and denazify Ukraine.